Right, so, going over this push prep, basically three questions. One question for 4.1, two questions for 4.2. Exactly what you see right there at, where is it? It's 11.35, there it is. At 11.35, I will write up three questions on the board. You will write them down and you'll do the problem. Okay. Right. You'll make sure you put your first and last name on it first, I hope. Okay. If you write down the wrong problem and do the wrong problem, it's, it's wrong. So make sure you copy it down correctly. Um, you'll get the review sheet today. Okay, I'm just going to put them in the back of the room. Once you start the quiz, make sure you grab one on your way out. That's the chapter three, four review. During or later to this evening, I will post something called the final focus. I'm not going to print it. So if you want to print it, it's up to you. I'm going to send two versions. The reason why I'm not printing it is because one is 32 pages. The other one is 16. It's the same thing. But the 16-page version is just, it's on one page, has two of the pages on it. I double-paged it. But it's just so many pages. It's like a hundred multiple choice practice questions. Your final's not a hundred questions. I don't know how many it's going to be. I won't know until I write it. They will cover the entire semester. I promise it won't have more than four. Okay, max four. Multiple choice and you practice whatever you want on the final focus. Okay. Uh, next Tuesday, we review whatever you want to ask, whether it be for the chapter three, four, or if you want to ask something from the final book, it's on you. In addition to that, co-rec on Monday, co-rec on Tuesday, co-rec on Wednesday, co-rec on Thursday, the 8.30 to 9.45 class. I'll just be reviewing. Thursday, chapter three, four is due, homework, and then we take the chapter three, four test. That's the last day we meet for class. The last time we actually meet is the 10th. On Tuesday, the 10th, we have a final. Then that's it. It's over. Tuesday, the 10th, 10 o'clock to 11.50. We start at 10. We're not, we don't have anything to turn in. So don't be late. You people know who you're who I'm talking to. You'll need a Scantron 882-E. This Scantron right here. Bookstore sells them. The machine and the student lounge right down this little sidewalk here. Sells them. Okay. Number two pencil. Uh, the Corex don't meet that week, so I have office hours from seven thirty in the morning. My usual office hour time is seven thirty, and I will just extend it to nine thirty. Seven thirty to nine thirty on Monday and Wednesday, or Monday and Tuesday. Yes. So when's the last day for the program? Next, next Thursday. Because <laughs> the Corex don't take a fine. So during finals week, Monday and Tuesday, it's just I'm going to. Extend office hours from 7 30 to 9 30. I'm not going to go past 9 30 because I got to get ready for everybody to take the final. Okay. Now, everything I just said was recorded. So, whenever you have questions like what's going to be on the test or what's going to be on the final, when is the final, when's the test, I just recorded it. Like I do every single day. I, I, Maybe I should have said this earlier in the year. But I understand like when you're in a panic and you quickest thing to do is maybe email me and ask. But it's like, just send these things. And I just want to make sure that people who did email me, because this, this does happen in trig, it happens like, and so it's like, I'm going, deja vu, didn't I say anything? Because I'm old, and my brain doesn't work sometimes. 
So I kind of wonder, maybe I didn't say these things. But if you have the video, you have a video, always check the video. It happens right at the beginning of the video. Big brother has been watching me for so long. When I went to high school, my brother, who's also my godfather, taught at the high school that I went to. So big brother's been watching me forever. Couldn't get away from that. Okay. All this stuff here. Everything we've covered so far. Last time I'm gonna write it up. Okay. Make sure it stays focused. I never know if it's not, but it's not. No reason to have to communicate. I'm never in Tokyo. Everybody else. And I can't see like people. I look over there and it's like <laughs> All right. So, question number one, you have to do the calculator. Here's what I want to see from you. I want to see the substitution, the simplification, then you can do the calculator. So, you're given f of x is equal to negative 4 times e to the 5 thirds times x. Negative 4 times e to the 5 thirds x. And we're asking what is f of 9 over 10. So I want to see the substitution. So that's negative 4 times e to the 5 thirds times substitute for x 9 over 10. So that gives us simplify. Don't punch this in. Simplify what you're about to plug in. So f of 9 over 10 is equal to negative 4 e. 5 thirds times 9 over 10 is equal to 3 over 2. Because this is. Five over three, nine is three times three, ten is five times two. The so five reduce and a three reduces. So you're just left with three over two. Or if you want to go, this is 45, nine times five over 30. Then this is 15 times three, and this is three times. <clears throat> I don't do that. That's oh, I, fifteen times three, and then fifteen times two, three over two. But you want to reduce it before you actually do the problem. I want to see this. Simplify what you are going to plug into the problem. Less chance of a mistake if you do the work on paper first. Then I also have something to give you partial credit for. Because if you just try to plug it in on the calculator and you don't have something on paper, I don't know how you got it. First of all, did you just look at somebody's paper next to you? Without the process there, I don't know what you did. If you got it completely wrong... I don't know where you went wrong if you didn't show me on paper what you did first. Now we punch it in. If you want to play it safe, just do this part. It's negative 4 times this. So I'm going to go negative 4, and then I'm going to figure out this part first, and then I'll multiply by negative 4. You can type it in all at once, it doesn't matter. I'll type it in safely first. Remember, 
where E is. E is the base of the natural logarithm. E is the blue right here, E to the X. To activate that blue function, the second function, you have to hit second and then you hit E to the X, which is you press natural log. So you got second, and on your screen, you should see C to the what power? Well, I want to raise it to e to the three over two. So parentheses three divided by two. Close the parentheses. So e to that power is 4.48. Don't, you don't have to write it here, but use that number, okay, when you do the next multiplication. So it's negative four times 4.48168. 907, and now I'm just going to multiply by negative 4. And then let's do this. Is the answer going to be positive or negative? It's going to be a negative. So I don't have to type into my calculator negative 4 times that. I just have to multiply times 4. As long as I know already it's going to be a negative number. It's going to be negative. 17.92675. 628. Round to the nearest thousand. The thousand is the third decimal place, tenths, hundreds, thousands. So that seven rounds this six up to a seven. So it's equal to negative 17.927. That's the first question. Find it out. You are certainly welcome to type it in like this. Negative four times e to the positive three divided by two. Type it in all at once if you want. If you've been practicing with the calculator, I don't know what you're doing. <clears throat> Any questions? There? Now, the other two questions. I mean, if, if anything, I think that would be the one question that takes the most time. And it shouldn't take you more than maybe two or three minutes. So maybe it's the question that you want to do last. Maybe you do two and three first. Number two, you're supposed to rewrite this in exponent form. Log base 64 of 1024 is equal to 5 over 3. So you're supposed to convert that into logarithm form. All right, exponent form. And all you have to do is base to the across equals less than 5. Change it to an exponent. So what's the base? 64. 64. Base to the across. To the across. So 64 to the 5 over 3 to the 5 thirds equals what's inside. What's inside? 1,024. You're done. That was less than like 15 seconds. Well, we don't write down the logarithm. Well, if I'm converting it into exponent form, exponent form doesn't have a logarithm. Logarithm form doesn't have powers, technically, and exponent form doesn't have logarithms. So base to the across equals what's inside. Now, make sure your it's clear. Make sure it's written properly. This is 64 to the 5 thirds. This is not. That's not an exponent. Technically, I don't know what that is. That's not a power. Exponent should be up here in the superscript position. Be clear. 
Okay. Don't risk getting it wrong. You want to write it so somebody can understand it and isn't confused by what you wrote. And who will give you the correct amount of credit that you should deserve. Otherwise, you chance it. Okay. The last one, we're supposed to convert this into an exponent form. Sorry. We're supposed to take the exponential form and change it back into log form. Now, I want you to write it in its proper logarithm. So, there you go. Somebody came around and took our logarithm form. Somebody came around and took our logarithm form and did this to it. Log base something of something equals something. And they did base to the across equals what to south. So they did our log form and they went base to the across equals what's inside. So I'm actually quite a drunk thing. Base to the across equals what's inside. Base to the across equals what's inside. That's where everybody's supposed to go back into. First thing, the base of the logarithm, the base of the exponent, same thing. So what's the base of this exponent? E. So that's the base of the logarithm. Now I'm just putting it here for, for looks, just so you can see. The base is equal. Base to the across. So where should the 3x go? Over here, across the equals. Base to the across. Base to the across. So three e to the 3x. Base to the across. E to the 3x is over here. That's how we got e to the 3x. 64 to the 5 thirds is what we get. Base to the across. E to the 3x. Base to the across. Equals what's inside. So 340 came from what's inside. So that's how I put everybody back in their regular logarithm position. But that would lose a little bit of points because we don't write log with a base e. When it's a base e, it should be written as a natural logarithm of 340 equals 3x. Over there. Okay. If you have a base e, a base e, natural base, is a natural logarithm. So just write it with natural log. And it's L N, not I, it's an L N. And this would be your final final answer. Now, if you have a base 10, I don't mind if you put the 10 or if you write it without the 10. That's fine. But then base E is written with an L. That's your quiz. Calculator, convert to a exponential, convert to a log. Okay? 1135. We have change of base to finish examples from 4.3 and 4.4, and then that's it. In case you were wondering about that email I sent Sunday night, this is what I posted. I sent this email, uh, YouTube delivery, lots of how-to homework examples from 4244. These videos were created during the spring semester of 2022. Ignore any due date or test date references. Focus on the information and the examples. So there's extra examples that we're not doing in here from section 4.2, section 4.3, and section 4.4. Okay. 
So there's an extra practice, extra example for me to look at in terms of the home. That's why I sent that out. Any base. Your calculator only has two logarithm buttons. It has a common log button, that's base 10, because right above it, you see that there's a 10 to the X to remind you. And then it has the natural log button, and right above it is E to the X, so it does base E. It only does base 10 or base E. So if you wanted to do log base 5 of 9, you can't do it because you don't have a log base five. So here's why I'm, what I'm about to show you works. You can convert any base, log base B of X, into any other base. It's called the change of base, which means we can change it into a different base. It's already fuzzy. We can change it into another base. I can change this into log base, some different X, some different number, log base A of what's inside that X divided by log base A of the old base. Which, you know, that's just the rule. Change it into any other thing that you want. But let's be practical. If I only have base 10, common log, or base E, natural log, I'm probably not going to worry about log base A. I'm going to change it into one of those two. So we are primarily going to use it for this. Log base B of X, we're going to either convert it into the common log of X and divide by the common log of the old base. We'll use base 10 because I can punch those buttons. Or log base B of X is the natural log of X over the natural log of the old base. And I'll punch those buttons. It just depends upon what buttons you want to press. Now, here's why. Log base five of nine. What is the equal? Here's the question. I don't know, let's call it X. <laughs> Convert this into a X form. What's the base? Five. To the left. Base to the base to the across base. equals what's inside. Five to some power is enough. So obviously nine's not a power of five. You can't divide by five because that's not multiplication. You can't subtract five because that's not addition. Last Thursday we did the price is right rule. How do we bring down a power that's up here? You take the logarithm, and then the power can come down the front and become multiplication. So, if I'm going to use a calculator, I have a choice. I either take the common log, base 10, or I take the natural log of both sides. So, you have to decide. Common log or natural log? Okay. Natural log. So, if I natural log both sides... And that means both sides. I natural log this side, whatever you do to one, you do to both. This now becomes multiplication. Come on down. And it's x times the natural log of 5 
equals that natural log of nine. Now you have multiplication. So now you can divide both sides because you're solving for x by the natural log of five. <coughs> so x is equal to the natural log of nine divided by the natural log of five. Which means, here's the change of base. Log base B of X can be rewritten as the natural log of what's inside divided by the natural log of the old base. And we converted it into the natural log of the nine over the natural log of the old base five. That's why it works. Is the price is right? What makes that? power become a multiplication problem. So now we can actually get the power. So we can take the numerator, the natural log of nine. So the numerator is 2.197, divided by the next one of five. Next one of five is 1.609. 4379.2. And then you take the numerator divided by the denominator. And I'm showing you something. I'm about to do it in incorrect. This is the wrong answer. Can anybody tell me why it's wrong? Exactly. I didn't put it in parentheses. And here's how I can check. The answer that I have right here, 1.7213. What that means is five to this power, five to that power is supposed to make the nine. Because that's what it's solved for. It's all correct. So I can check by doing this. Five to the last answer, second, last answer. Let's see if we get nine. I don't think so. It didn't work. So here's how you want to type it in correctly. You look, five, a natural log of nine, and there's no closure on the parentheses. It's actually taking the natural log of nine divided by this. I want the natural log of nine, close it off, divided by that. So it should be natural log of nine divided by the natural log of the five. This is what's well, round to the next thousand, one point three six five. I don't need you to write this out. I want to see this. And then if you just type it in and go to here, that's fine. Okay. Be careful typing it in. I know a lot of you are just going to type in. And you're going to write down whatever the calculator says. But it's really easy to write, you know, check the answer. We just are figuring out five to what power makes nine. All I have to do is go, all right, is five to this answer actually come out equal to nine? Just like I did before. So five to the last answer. Doesn't equal nine. Right now. Yeah.
but I've used a base hem. I can use whatever algorithm I want. Calculator does base 10 or base E only. So that's what you have to focus on. You have to focus, pick one. If I were to use base 10, it would look like this. Log phase five of nine is the common log of nine over the common log of five. And the only difference is, I'm not gonna actually write them down, but I wanna show you. But I take the common log of nine and the common log of five. They are entirely different numbers than my natural log numbers because common log is base 10 and this is a base E. So the numerator here is 2.197. But here it's a 0.954. Well, column log of five is 0 0.6987, 69897. Down here for the natural, it's 1.609. But when I divide, when I find the ratio, I get this. When I divide, I'll get the same answer. Common log nine, close it, divide by common log. Five, and we get the same answer. But it doesn't matter whichever one you pick. That's chain theory. Okay, 4.3 examples. Examples number six. All they want from you is to write the write the ratio, uh, change of base using common logs and natural logs. Don't overthink, we're just rewriting. So number six, we're given log base three of X. So using common logs, part A, it would be the common log of X over the common log of three. And then part B, rewriting it using change of base and natural logs. It's the natural log of what's inside over the natural log of three, the base. So what does it look like if you change it to base 10? What does it look like if you change it to base E? And on 10, log base A, of four this, change it to base 10. So that would be log base 10 of the inside, four this up there, and then down below, log base 10 of the A. <coughs> and when you change it to natural log, natural log of the inside, the four this. Divided by the natural log of your base, natural log of A. How are you doing? Okay. Next one for the calculator. For 14. Three decimal places, log base nine of four. So we don't have a log base nine button. So do you want to convert it into base 10, common log, or base E, natural log? Natural. So I, if I can get this question on the test, all I want to see written from you, I want to see if you're going to convert it into natural log, then I want to see, all right, natural log of what's inside. 
over the natural log of the base. Now, I want you to at least that. And then you can just punch it up on the counter. Log of the four, close it, divide by, and then the log is of the nine. Close it. And it wants three decimal places. So one, two, three. This nine rounds to zero up to a one. So this is approximately 0 0.631. Point two on twenty two, we're supposed to rewrite that as a logarithm of a four and a, a natural log of four and a natural log of five. So we are somehow supposed to rewrite this natural log of 500 using only natural log of 4 and 4 natural log of 5. Because back before the creation of slide rules and, and calculators, you had to look up these values in a tape. And you're not going to find the natural log of 500. You're only going to find natural log of prime numbers. You wouldn't find the natural log of four, but they, you know, they're taking the easy on this. So somehow we have to convert 500 into multiples of fours and a five. All right? 500. Which means you're going to factor. You're going to use these rules. We separate multiplication with addition. Natural log of u times z is the addition of natural log of u plus the natural log of e. If you have division, we separate it with subtraction. If you have exponents, come on down. You need two numbers that can make 500. 50 and 10. 50 and 10? Oh, that's awkward. Okay. 50 is? 5 and 10. 5 and 10? 10 is? 2 and 5. So we got a 5, 10 is. 2 and 5, we got a 2, and we got a 5. So I want 5 and a 4. 5 and 4 is all I want. How many 5s do we have? So 5 to the 3rd, and we have a couple of 2s, so that would just be whoops, 5 to the 3rd times the 4. Because I want 5 and a 4. I'm not breaking anybody out of jail. We're not doing jail. We're not serving three of a kind, two of a kind. We're not doing any of that. I want natural logs of fours and natural logs of five. This is equal to the natural log of five to the third times a four. How do I split that? Multiplication, what can I do with the multiplication inside? I can split it up into addition. So I can split this up into the natural log of five to the third plus a natural log of four, which I can stop with this one. Having a natural log of four is perfectly fine. I have to have just a simple natural log of five, though, not a five to the third. What can I do with that power of three? On down three times the natural log of five plus the natural log of four. That's how you rewrite it as a natural log of five with a natural log of four.
26 is making you do a table type of question without actually saying look these up in the table. In 26, we're told that log base V of 2 is approximately 0 0.3562. Log base V of 3 is approximately 0 0.5646. And log base V of 5 is approximately 0 0.8278. We're supposed to approximate log base B of 30 using those decimals. Well, that means you got to figure out how to split apart 30 into twos, threes, or fives, and or fives. So don't think of it there. Think of the 30 over here. Give me two numbers that make a 30. What's that? 15 and 2. 15 and 2? And 15 is 3 times 5 and a 2. 3, 5s, and 2s. That's what I want. So I can rewrite this log base B of 30 into log base B <coughs> 2 times 3 times 5. <laughs> Numbers kind of orders kind of thing. Now, it says log base B of U times U. That's just two things. Is log base B of U plus log base B of U. What if it's three things? Do you think I can still add three things? Is that okay? Of course. This is just log base B of 2 plus log base B of 3 plus log base B of the 5. So it's 0 0.3562 plus log base, uh, no more log, it places it, 0 0.5646 plus 0 0.8271. Let's see. Nine, seven, four, one point seven four seven nine. All right. Okay. So, what is log baby of thirty? One point approximately one point seven four seven nine. You can't do it on a calculator because you don't know what B is. I can't punch it up. I can only use these values. Use the properties to rewrite and simplify. Number four. Log base three of nine squared <laughs> times two to the fourth. Well, we have multiplication, so how's that get split up? Uh, addition. So it's a log base three of nine to the second plus log base three of two to the fourth. And I tell you, if you at least mumble it to yourself or say it in your head as you write it, you will write it correctly. Log base three of nine to the second. So it's read correctly. If you say it or mumble it or hear it in your head 
as you write it, you'll write it better. <clears throat> I'm going to skip a step and see if you can figure out what I just did. This is 4 plus 4 times log base 3 to 2. Ask him if he got You got the four log two, but how did you get the log? Okay. So you go lots of different ways. This right here, log base three of nine squared. You can bring down the two and you get two times log base three of nine. But you have to remember nine is the power of three. They have something in common. Nine is three squared. So that's two times log base three. That's three to the second. The base is three. Inside you have base three. Again, over there, it's rule number three. Log base b of b to the x. If the base of the logarithm is the same as the base of the exponent inside, this logarithm undoes that exponent. You just get the power. You just get the two. So this is two times two. Okay. That's why it's a four. Or this is nine is three squared. So it's three squared squared. So this technically could just be log base three of three to the fourth. Which again, base to the base is three, inside is base three. They undo each other, just get four. Or if you change that one more way, it was a nine. So that's log root three of 81. Huh. I wonder if I ever gave you anything that might help you know your powers. Let's see, three to some, oh yeah, there it is. Three to the fourth is 81. So three to what power makes 81? This is three to the fourth. So you have log base three of three to the fourth. So it simplifies. And that's how I got four. And if it didn't, if it was log base like the other you know, side of the other term, log base three of two to the fourth, the only thing I can do is bring down the four. Because that's a base three, and inside that's a base two. I can't work through it. Because the base is a three and the longer, no, inside is a base two. I can't work through that. But inside here, nine is a power of three. They got a lot of, a lot of stuff in common. Okay. Expand. These are problems of logarithms to expand the expression and the sum different and or constant multiple of logarithms. Expand. Which, if you like science fiction, if you ever watch The Expanse, then that's, that's a good show. Log base 10 of 100x. So if it's multiplication, how do I split that up? 100 times x. No, well, we're done like six times. How do we split up a multiplication on the inside? Addition. So it's log base 10 of 100. Plus, which I've never watched a hundred log base 10 of x. Log base 10 of x, you're done there, can't go anywhere else. 
But do you see where this will be a two? You see where I'm going with that log base 10 of the hundreds? It's base 10. 100 is a power of a 10. 100 is 10 to the what? To the second. This 100 is 10 to the second power. Since the base of the logarithm is 10, inside is a base 10 to the 2, they undo each other, it's just 2. Or if you rewrite this as log base 10 of 10 squared, you can bring down the 2 and it's 2 times log base 10 of 10. Then you're looking at rule number 2. Rule number 2 says log base b of b. If I take log base b of itself, the answer is 1. So log base 10 of 10, that's 2 times 1 which is two, or log base 10 of 10 times 10, because 100 is 10 times 10. Well, that could be log base 10 plus log base 10 of 10, plus another log base 10 of 10, because I can split up multiplication with addition. Well, these two are just one, one plus one. Hey, I still get two. Because it's math. If I follow the rules, I'll get the same answer, correct answer, no matter how I do it. Because it's math. It doesn't matter which way you do it correctly, and you'll get the same answer. The trick is following the rules. Learning the rules, following the rules. Now making it up. So if you think when you're doing your test, it doesn't look like anything we've ever done in class before. This doesn't look like anything. Probably shouldn't be doing it. And if you don't know where to go, you might want to get up and ask. I don't think I've had more than maybe a hand, less than a handful of people actually get up and ask out of all of my classes this semester. And I keep saying it. But, you know, maybe it's a long walk out. That might have saved some people a little bit of heartache. And that's okay. So we want to rewrite that using properties of logarithms. Okay. Natural log of x, y over z. So, first thing you want to separate is the division. The whole thing, x, y is being divided by a z. So it's this whole thing, natural log of the x times y, not my L, my N, natural log of that XY minus the natural log of the Z. Then what can I do with this? How do I split a multiplication? Oh, you are. Make these into two logarithms using addition. Natural log of the X plus the natural log of the Y, and then minus the natural log of the Z. I'll tell you, when I give this question on a test, they stop here. You're supposed to separate it, you know, into individual logarithms. And they go, all right, I guess I'm tired. I, I've done all I can. You still have multiplication. You can go one more step. Don't try to do it all at once. You take a second step. And now we're going to put it back together. 
Once we go left, then we have to go right. So we want to write this as one logarithm. So somebody took our logarithm and split it up into the natural log of y plus the natural log of z. So how can I rewrite it in terms, condense it into one logarithm? If it got split up with addition, when I rewrite it as a single logarithm, how would I put it back together? Y times z. Addition happened because it was multiplication before. Or what gets split up into addition, multiplication gets split up into addition. That's where that came from. And here comes the speed round. No calculator, speed round. I know some of you are going to finish this test probably in maybe a half an hour. And if you do the if you try to do the bonus, maybe it'll take you 50 minutes. I don't know. So 90. Okay. Long base sends a six. Long base five one over one point five. So this is the equivalent of the work you would have to show. This answer is one, this is negative three, this would equal, and maybe a little bit more work, but this answer is three, and this is 15. Ninety. that's all the work you'd have to show, because it's just property number two. Log base B of itself is one. Base is B, inside is B. Base is six, inside is six, the answer is one. Or if you don't know your properties by heart, log base six is six. I told you from the very beginning, this will save you behind. I don't know, call it X. And then rewrite it, base, to the across equals what's inside. So six to some power equals X, or six to some power equals six. So what power would I have to raise this six to to get a six? It would have to be a one. I can rewrite it and figure out what X has to be. Or I can know the I can know that property. If I know the property is a one. This one, the property says log base b of b to the x is just x. If I recognize open that chart, it can go over six points. If I recognize log base b of b to the x, the answer is just x log base 5 of 1 over 125. 5 to the third is 125. However, that's not 5 to the third. This is log base 5 of 1 over 5 to the third. 
So what you're looking at is log base five of five to the negative three. It has to be in the numerator in order for it to count. So if it's a positive three in the denominator, you flip it up. So it's five to the negative three. So now the base is five. Inside the base is five, the answer is negative three. Log base five of one over two. I don't know what's called it. Base to the across, five to the x equals one to the nine. You still have to be able to do this. Five to the x equals one over five to the third. It won't work until you flip it up though. Five to the x equals five to the negative three. On 96, you don't work with two logarithms if you have the same base. They're both base four, and you have addition in between. I can't convert this unless I have one logarithm. So how do I put one, or how do I combine two logarithms back into one if I have addition? How do I condense this back into one log if there's addition of the Well, two times 32. So this is actually log base four of 64. That's what this is, right? Log base four of 64. So the question they're actually asking, and let's just go to base three across. I don't know what's called it. Base to the across. Four to the X equals what's inside. Four to what power is 64? Well, 64 is four to the third. Now, number 100, you need to recognize that this is just this, but using natural logarithms. Natural log of e to the fifth. When you have natural log of e to the x, the base of a natural logarithm is an e. Inside, you have a base e. If the bases are the same, they undo each other. You just get that power. So three times the natural log of e to the fifth. So this is three times. Since the base of the logarithm is an e, and inside you have a base e, they undo each other. This is just five. Three times five is 15. Because it's base, the natural logarithm is a base here. There's an e in it. The base of it is e. It is base e.
Let's we'll see if we can get the 100 point. Uh, I'm kind of, I'm leaving the uh, 62, 656, I think, 56, 62, 68 off because that entails quite a bit of calculator, you know, substitution and plug it in. It was 3DX equals 2.3. 3 to the equals 200 to 3 and that just that takes a lot of time. So we can only do that on two three, which you still need to see. All right, 24. When you're solving an exponential equation, you certainly can do the logarithms if you want. But the way you do these is you find a common base. All right. I can't emphasize enough. Have to build this chart in. These powers really are going to help you know the basics. Or at least try to find a common base out of what you have available for think common base. You do get to use a calculator, so maybe you punch up some exponents to see if you find something. Two hundred forty-three. Now, actually, I'm going to put it back up so you can you'll see it on the chart. Two hundred forty-three. The only thing I can look for is a power of three. It is right here. It's three to the fifth power. Power of five. Three to the fifth is two hundred forty-three. So I rewrite this, 3 to the x over here is 3 to the fifth, so x has to equal 5. Done. And it's a lot like asking, you know, 5 times x equals 60. So what times x equals 60? x has to equal 12, if you think it through. But it's exponents, so you would need to know powers. Now, this one is different. First of all, if you go straight across, 3, 64. 64 is not a power of 3. 4, 27, 27 is not a power of 4. However, 3, 27 is a power of 3. 27 is 3 to the third. 64, we just got done with. 64 is a power of 4. It's 4 to the third. They're just, they're just flipped. Flipped. If it's negative down below, it's positive up above. If it's negative up above, it's positive down below. They're positives. If I flip them, they'll be negatives. So this would be 3 to the negative 3 over 4 to the negative 3, which means it's 3 over 4 to the negative third power. 3 fourths to the x is equal to 3 fourths to the negative 3. Rewrite it with the same base. So x has to equal negative 3. On 36, now we've got something a little different. It's 4 to the x minus 1. You might want to put that in parentheses so you don't think it's 4 to the x and then a minus 1. The exponent is the x minus 1. Rewrite both sides with the same base. So we're trying to think as 256. Oh, absolutely.
256 is 4 to the 4th. You know, if you're in a bind, you know, 4 to the 1st is 4, 4 squared, 16, 4 to the 3rd, 64, multiplied by 4 one more time, 64 times 4, 256. So this 4 to the x minus 1 is the same as 4 to the 4th power. So this x minus 1 is equal to 4. Remember, you still have to solve that. But then you just add 1. So x equals 5. But you can't get there until you convert each one to the same base, base 4. Rewrite with the same base. There's lots of ways to go about this one. I'm just going to show you the quickness. It's the fourth property over there. If natural log of X equals natural log of Y, then the inside X has to equal Y. So since I have two natural logarithms, and over here is zero. If I add the natural log of two to both sides, I now have the natural log of X equal to the natural log of two. If natural log of this equals natural log of that, then this X has to equal that too. Now let's just think for a second. Natural log of X minus natural log of two cancel out. So what am I gonna subtract the natural log of two from? to make zero, I would have to subtract it from another natural one. That's how I'm going to get it there. That's the only thing I can subtract it from. Okay. In other words, like if I said x minus 12 equals zero, well, the only thing I can subtract 12 from to get zero would have to be 12 minus 12. So this would have to be natural one and two. But the answer is not natural log of two. on what's in the top Yes. And here it comes again to save your behind. What does x equal? Well, base to the across equals what's inside. 10 to the negative 1, 4 equals what's inside. You're solving for x. <laughs> You don't leave an answer with negative exponents. So this is one over 10 to the positive one fourth equals X. Now I didn't ask for a decimal. So why punch it up? Leave it like that. You, you don't want to change it to a radical either. I'd leave it as one fourth. Because if I change this into a radical, one over the fourth root of 10, now I have a, a radical down there. I got a rationalized with the denominator. How do I want to go through that? But it's just what is x equal? Base to the across equals what's inside. That's how I get the x out of it. And the across into what's inside. But do you see when I say, you know, some of you are going to finish like in, you know, a half an hour, 40 minutes? These go by very quickly if you are practiced and ready. I know I'm blowing through these and I know your guys going, I'm going to write them, write them, write them. But it's the language that I keep throwing at you. Practice the language as you do these on your own. Practice the language as you do them on your own. That's where it will come through for you. Don't be passive with it. Who's my one? Because that's why. Because. But why? Because I said so. 
What's the base of this natural organ? Mm -hmm. What's inside that natural organ is base E. They do each other. It's just two exponents from A. Remember, this C right there is not the base of what you're dealing with the logarithm right here. This base E right here is what's inside the logarithm. The base of the logarithm is not written for us. When we write LN, that's a logarithm base E. So the base of the logarithm is E, and then inside you have an exponent base E. So now they undo each other. So the answer is just that. Rule number two. Part. Rule number three. And that there's no work to show. It's can you recognize the rule? This one, I in the past, it's baffled people. You have to say, don't see that rule. Oh, They do want decimal, so you would punch it in, but <clears throat> I'm just going to give you the exact answer. You can punch it in on your own. What's the base? E to the across. E equals what's inside. That's the answer. You punch that into your calculator, then you have a decimal. And then on 104, what's the base? What's the across? Equals what's inside. And now to solve for X, we are doing chapter two stuff. If I have X squared equals 12 to the six, how would I solve this? How do I get X if I have X squared? Square root. How do I take the square root of both sides? So I get X equal. Now here's the question. Do I actually want to raise 12 to the 6 and then take the square root? Probably not. This is 12 to the 6, a one-half power is my square root. A square root is a one-half power. What's six times a half? Three. This is 12 to the third. You can take it from there. Because we have a twist here. So you need a piece of paper, please, a full sheet of paper. One full sheet. With the first and last name on it, and hang on, if you if you have paper with uh, frayed edges, I'd rather not have you use frayed edges. Use printer paper instead. So if you need printer paper, come up and I'll put it in the back. Go back and grab one. Frayed edges are getting in the carpet and you don't drink like a frayed edge. So if you have find your paper that has frayed edges, certain paper is back. And I will put the uh, review sheets for chapter three, four in the back in just a minute. Oh, yeah, this is always open up.